Okay, we're going to call to order the County Planning Commission um, at 7.03, I think, or 2. Um, can we get a roll call, please? Vice Chair Ford. Commissioner Onines. Here. Chair Moore. Here. Commissioner Whipple. Here. Commissioner Hancock. Here. So, um, can I get approval of the minutes for the Katati Planning Commission regular meeting of August 6, 2018? Does anybody have any changes? Any? Uh, Madam Chair, if I could, yes. I, I had one clarification um, for you. On page 6 of the packet, um, where we've repeated the um, language that we um, changed for condition number 4, mm -hmm. uh, the language actually um, says, uh, this permit shall expire upon the departure of the current applicant, Brandon Levine, from a, uh, excuse me, Brandon Levine in the micro business um, from a controlling position, comma, should be change in tenancy or sale or transfer of the business. So we'll make that correction to the minutes. Okay. And that's packet page uh, six. six. So there are two spots in the lower third of that page where we've repeated the, the wording. So it's right, the easiest place to find it is the second bullet point at the bottom of the page. All right, duly noted. Okay, do I have a second? I'll second. Um, can we get a roll call, please? Commissioner Onines? Yes. Chair Moore? Yes. Commissioner Whipple? Yes. Commissioner Hancock? Yes. So any changes to the agenda? Uh, no changes, Madam Chair. And um, at this time we have oral and written communications. The public is asked to please step to the podium and state your name and address for the record. Please use, limit your comments to items not already agendized for discussion. I see none. I'll close the... Um, I'll close the public hearing and go to matters at hand. Election of the 2019 chair and vice chair. So, um, yes, I think the way we've handled these um, in the recent past is uh, just a discussion among the commissioners as to who's willing um, or would like to uh, serve in the positions. And then the the commissioners um, nominate uh, through the chair, and typically we take separate actions on each position. So one vote for the chair and one vote for the vice chair. Um, obviously, the current chair is Commissioner Moore, and the vice chair right now is Commissioner Ford. And Ben did um, send an, an email saying that he'd be willing to take chair. He didn't. In fact, he sent an email saying he'd be prepared to nominate me if he had been here. But I'd like. Oh, to I'm, I'm, I didn't. I guess I didn't read that. No, he sent an email to me. Oh, to you. I'm sorry. Says, I... um, I'm just saying that was just on a, on a personal level. I'm certainly prepared to put my name forward on the um, the chair. I've okay. Been the chair before and um, been through the procedures, but I'm happy with whatever the the board decides. Is everybody okay with you? Taking chair? Okay, I nominate um, Neil Hancock for chair of the Planning Commission. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Can we get a roll call? Commissioner Onines? Yes. Chair Moore? Yes. Commissioner Whipple? Yes. Commissioner Hancock? Yes. So now we need Vice Chair Suzanne. Would you like to be Vice Chair? I can entertain that idea. If no one else wants to I think it's, step I think it's up, I do too. I think you. We'll, we'll give you a year, and then <laughs> that I'm on. Okay. I nominate sure. Susan Whipple to be vice chair. I second. Can we get a roll call on that? Yes. 
Chair Moore? Yes. Commissioner Whipple? Yes. Commissioner Hancock? Yes. Congratulations. Congratulations, both of you. Neil, do you want to trade now or do you want me to? So we're going to matter at hand the um, second item, Grab South Roof Brewery Use Permit Amendment, Resolution of the Planning Commission of the City of Katati approving amendments to a use permit for a brew pub, bar tavern with a life of live entertainment, nightclub at <coughs> 7950 Redwood Suites, um, Redwood Drive, Suites 15 and 16. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, first, uh, JP sends his apologies. This uh, was his work. He did the work um, here, but he has uh, he came down ill late last week and is not doing better yet. So he sends his apologies. Um, <clears throat> one quick thing to orient the commission is that the conditions of approval which are attached to the staff report that is beginning on packet page 13, those are shown in underlined strikeout so that you can easily pick out the changes and then the conditions later in the packet that are attached to the resolution, those are the final versions. So that's why they're in there twice. And then uh, I wanted to call your attention to one correction in the resolution on page packet page 16. Uh, the fourth recital down, um, we were originally striving to make this um, item, to, to hold this item on December 3rd, and we weren't able to make that hearing date, but um, we will be changing that to January 7th, today's date. So that's just one correction. Um, on to the, the actual content of the request that's before you. Um, as you will remember or know, the, um, a prior use permit was approved for this brew pub and uh, the, they've been operating successfully and have been a great addition to the community um, by all accounts. Uh, when the applicant came in the first time, uh, they uh, had an idea how the business would run. Um, they've been up and operating for a few years now and have uh, submitted this application to do two minor changes, uh, and that would be to extend the operation, the operations from five days a week to seven days a week, to, expend, to excuse me, expand the hours from 11 a.m. to, uh, they're currently 11 to 9 p.m., um, so they want to expand those from 11 to 11. And then uh, I guess a third change would be the um, way that we would monitor amplified music. So they uh, currently have an approved, excuse me, a condition and we'll navigate to that. Um, packet page 13, um, condition of approval number six, uh, wherein this was, uh, this use permit was approved before we did at least two others where we've struggled a little bit to figure out how to monitor noise levels that made it affordable to the applicants as, um, and also uh, achieve the results that we're looking for, which is to be sensitive to surrounding land uses. So when this use permit was approved, um, they had the requirement that before outdoor amplified music events um, were approved, except through a limited term permit, an event permit, that they would complete an acoustical study to show us to model predicted noise levels. And so what we're proposing with this amendment is more in line with the more recent use permit approvals where we've just said 
when you have events or outdoor music, monitor it at the property line so that we know what the sound levels are at the property line. So that's the, the bulk of that change. And the way that um, we arrived at that uh, recommendation is detailed in your staff report um, that basically the surrounding, closest surrounding land uses are office uses. And the code requirement for noise levels at the property line for office uses is 75 dBA. So that's what's recommended here as the maximum amount of noise at the property line. And noise levels are typically monitored at property lines um, regardless of uses next door because it's, say in this case where there are multiple tenants in one building, that's considered more a property management issue than a land use code issue. So we're more concerned with how it's impacting surrounded property owners and users, whereas the, the property owners should be responsible for monitoring nuisances to fellow tenants. So um, after thinking about it, we thought that if we're monitoring at the property line and we're monitoring for that most sensitive, closest land use, i.e. offices, um, that that would be a sufficient level for them to operate at and still protect in accordance with the land use code. Um, JP has included this figure one, which I think is really helpful to sort of get an idea, that's on packet page 11, to get an idea of really what um, typically typical ambient noise levels are in our environment. And uh, the thing that we come back to with this location and, and why I think it is a good location for this use um, is that that location next to the highway, next to Highway 101 and next to Highway 116, really when you're looking at traffic levels, um, they're at that noise level already. So um, if Graf South had amplified music, it's not apt to um, create a bigger nuisance than is what, a, what is already existing. Um, that is really the bulk of the request. It was really a simple, straightforward request for amendments. And um, JP is at the ready with my cell phone. So if you have questions that, that uh, I can't answer, I'm happy to talk to him about it. Um, and with that, I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Um, directed to staff. How, just because I'm new to this field, how does an applicant monitor the decibel levels? Yeah, they're a good question. Um, there are a variety of um, noise monitors out there at varying levels of sophistication. Um, noise levels that are used for planning and zoning are weighted over a 24 hour period, meaning that. Um, if you might expect construction, for example, to be taking place in the daytime hours. So if, if that level um, over an average 24 hours um, silent at night or more quiet at night, um, the idea is that there's more noise with just ongoing business and activity during the day. So it's weighted on a 24 hour period. So the biggest difference in noise monitors are the sophistication to which they can give you that weighted average. So um, we did some preliminary pricing to see what those monitors might cost. Um, they range sort of from $50 on up. Um, so the applicant could easily invest in one that would give us at least a general indication of what the noise levels are and then we could um, weight them. We could talk to noise acoustical um, analysts to weight those. Um, the other thing that the city has in its budget that we're looking into right now is to purchase a noise monitor for ourselves for code compliance. Um, it's a frequent issue with mixed use development and um, entertainment uses so we've 
thought it was a good investment for us to have so if we think the noise levels are approaching that based on the applicants information back to us within the next few months we should have our own noise monitor that we could go verify so any any discussion open it up for is anybody from the public like to make any comment or the good idea welcome so I'm the property owner so if you have any questions for me I'm available but wanted to support the applicant in this application could you just say your name for the right oh my name is Craig in yard and I live in Hillsburg and I own Gravity Steam Business Center 7950 Redwood Drive and I just want to echo what the staff report said which is if you could just visualize 101 off ramp in the back highway 116 to the south Redwood Drive and Lowe's to the west and industrial to the north there's you know just really very little impact by having you know entertainment our last tenant which is a dispensary which you sort of helped us with the last time you met I think August 6 that closed at 7 so other than you know you know any other hours they do for you know production or operation so I think the application makes sense in terms of you know increasing the number of business days just because that's what they'd like to do and we think the use has been great for the center they're kind of an anchor at the south spa lands at the north and dispensaries pretty much everything in between so there's really no impact to the current tendencies as well so I just want to thank you for all your support once again we've gotten a lot of support recently and helping us you know expand and maintain a occupancy level and we're obviously very happy with you know the way things are going so appreciate your support tonight so any other public comment anybody else want to so I'll close public comment then and bring it back for discussion with the also I guess I'll start I think it's a I'm surprised that they didn't do it the first time when they came because I was actually suggesting that because I was like you're probably gonna want to increase your hours and I think they're a good fit and I think the idea of music in that area is nice I think the parking is adequate out there if you wanted to have some kind of music and I know we didn't really touch on that but everything kind of closes down around 7 in there and I just think it's a good fit there's not that many neighbors to impact I support this proposal and I think it's quite impressive that the police have had no call outs anytime since they've been open and I think that says a lot about their management and how they're conducting their business I'd like to support business in Katahdi and try to help it grow so this is a great opportunity to grow this business and I think we really need a lot of additional places that are open late to go so I'm hoping that will will be good for customers and for your business I'm in the same I agree support the motions a great location as you actually said where it actually is both in terms of the location and other businesses actually around there in full disclosure I have been in and enjoyed some of the beers so you know that's been very good nice location nicely run so yes I think it's great so can I have a motion to I'll make that motion although do we need a resolution number we fill in the resolution number afterwards but if your motion could include the correction to the date that would be great yeah so let me get to that page that's page 16 thank you so I move that the resolution of the Planning Commission of the City of Katahdi approving amendments to a use permit for a brew pub bar tavern with live entertainment nightclub at 7950 Redwood Drive 
suites 15 and 16 with the amendments of changing the date from December 3rd, 2018 to January 7th, 2019 in the fourth whereas. I'll second. Can I have a roll call, please? Commissioner O'Nine? Yes. Chair Hancock? Yes. Vice Chair Whipple? Yes. Commissioner Moore? Yes. Congratulations. Have fun with it. Or <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on to um, reports by staff. Yes, thank you very much. Um, I wanted to, it's been a while since we met, so I wanted to run through some of the projects that I, I know you all are familiar with. Um, the Katati Station multifamily project, um, as well as the 100 Valparaiso project. Uh, the developer is in negotiations with builders on both of those projects and uh, we're uh, finalizing sort of the um, public improvement agreements and the affordable housing agreements and all those which will go to council um, hopefully soon, um, but those are in the works. I know it's been quiet on both of them for quite a while, so um, there will be some future action hopefully in the next 45 to 60 days on those so that they both um, go under construction maybe late spring, early summer. Uh, the hotel project, um, that one is, um, we've gotten through all of really the core issues around um, compatibility with a specific plan or compliance with a specific plan. Um, we're right now finalizing what the road should look like, the existing St. Joseph's Way and how it ends, how it terminates. And so uh, that one I expect um, will go uh, either to through design review or to you for some preliminary look at, um, hopefully quickly, not, um, I don't have a date on it yet, but it's um, turning into a very nice project and, and obviously we're excited about that one. Um, JP is also working on the two projects that are on Highway 116, uh, the ones that are on either side of Alder, meaning east and west of Alder at the corner. Um, those have gone through uh, several review cycles and there are still um, outstanding questions about the Highway 116 interface with engineering, uh, but those should be also coming to a resolution in the next couple of months. Uh, we're going to be issuing the second request for proposals on cannabis uses to take up the um, remaining permit numbers, so we, ha we have more allocations of permits than we had applications for. And then one of those applicants, at least one of those applicants, has decided not to go forward, so that one will go back in the pool. So uh, we'll be issuing that in the next, um, next month, I think, or less, and so those will be coming back to the council for evaluation also, probably springtime. And then uh, finally, um, Bike to Work Day is coming up on May 9th, that's a Thursday. Um, so um, we wanted to uh, just find out people's, to gauge people's temperature for whether we wanted to have a booth this year. Again, it seems like a good idea. Um, so if you have any thoughts about that, I'd be happy to hear those. Last year, um, JP and I and Ashley from the rec department together with um, David Dioma from uh, the Mud Packs, I think that's the name of his, mm -hmm. um, we staffed it and we had, um, I want to say, uh, old lady brain, but I think there were about 20, 22 people that stopped by, so it seemed like a good location and it was fun. So um, if if you all think it's a worthwhile thing to do, then then uh, we can certainly um, do it again this year. And if you have any thoughts about how to organize or if you want to um, help us staff it, that would be great. And uh, I think with that, um, those are the big ticket items. We have a series of um, 
amendments that we need to do to the ordinance or land use code for housing related issues but we're still waiting through those the state passed a number of housing bills as you probably have heard in 2017 so we're still working on what that the impacts of that those bills had so you'll be getting a slew of housing related things coming up um, just don't have a timeline for them yet the uh, event coming at the end of the month uh, what is our role to be in it and is there any way that we could prepare for it uh, the special joint meeting for wayfinding thank you for bringing that up yes that is going to be the adoption hearing so um, uh, we'll be bringing the whole document forward and you all should have received that document um, or the excuse me the folks on the wayfind um, on the steering committee um, have received that document and then the whole bodies each of the whole bodies will um, be receiving it shortly we'll um, get it out ahead of the standard council packet because it's pretty large uh, but it'll be a different type of meeting because um, we wanted the consultant here and it wasn't in the budget to have him come out three times so that's why we're going to have a special joint meeting so um, there will be a, some furniture rearranging for it uh, but basically wanted everybody to be here and there's going to be one joint conversation with all the bodies and um, we'll likely have to have um, three separate resolutions for it so it's going to be a little juggling of that but um, generally it'll be a discussion and then an action by each of the bodies to adopt well I think just reading through the document when it's distributed to you and making sure that yeah the um, JP did a lot of work with a consultant um, on a field day for locations so I think for the bodies it would be making sure that um, you listen to the steering committee's thoughts about the design we went through um, really five iterations of design or five design options and uh, the locations where they're going to be in sort of the hierarchy of signs so it, it gets to be a lot more um, complicated than it seems at first to make sure that you've got a nested series of signs and all that but um, it's well thought through so I think just um, making sure that you agree with where the important locations are that the design is something you can support and uh, we'll be coming to you with um, a sort of generalized prioritization because we can't fund all of the signs at once so we'll be coming with a prioritization of how we think they should be installed so those are probably the high points the big takeaways I mean just to add to that I'm on that committee and so we've seen these documents except for the prioritization so I think you'll have some good stuff too to read through and really just visualize where they're going to be in Katati. Do you think it's digestible? It's very pictorial, very digestible. Do I have enough time to read it before? Um, you know, it just depends on how much work you want to do and going out and seeing the locations. But I think it is. I think it's in a very good okay. state. It's very professionally done. So any comments on? I just wanted uh, to comment about the bike to work day. I think it's worthwhile doing, although Having said that, I can't be there. <laughs> but, um, and I do want to let staff know and my other uh, commissioners know that I'm going to be gone from May 2nd through May 27th. I won't be available. Good yeah. New, New Zealand. Ooh. Here I come. <laughs> do you have any? Um, no, I, so what, what date was that again for the bike to work the, um, day? Uh, Thursday, May 9th. May 9th. Oh. And the joint meeting? The joint meeting is Tuesday, January 22nd, 2 2. So I support the bike um, meeting, or at least the bike to work day. I mean, last year I actually dropped through, went through it, and uh, there was a group this end. And actually, when I got down the other end of McDowell, because I took the train down on the bike oh. with my bike. And um, on the other end of McDowell, there was quite a, 
quite a group out there. There was a bunch of people who um, work in the local businesses at the South McDowell site, that, uh, I guess corporate circle. So that was very, very active. And so there's a good group of people coming out. There were people coming out from, I guess, SSU, but it was raising the visibility. So if you, I'd be happy to volunteer. If um, uh, I, I, last year, I guess there wasn't any need. The previous year, I did, but um, if that works, that would be fine. If there's a need there, and um, the question I had on the housing, there's a, I guess some some lists that have been put together about that we heard at the planning conference. So does Katati fall into one of those lists? Of, of having to pay attention to housing, because it sounded like that Sonoma County was in good shape. Yeah, uh, I think you're probably referring to the um, compliance, if you're in right. or out of compliance. <coughs> um, Couldn't quite get the technical language there, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's, a, there's lots of different things flying around, so um, it's hard to track it. Um, yeah, so far, we are okay. We're about halfway through the um, housing element cycle, and we've built about half of what we need. Um, funny enough, we've built more in the affordable range than we have market rate. So um, as soon as Valparaiso comes online, um, we'll be much better set because that's a mix with actual moderate and market level homes in it. Um, so th there are some serious ramifications, though, for not being in compliance, which is a little frustrating because y you can streamline, you can have sites, you can do everything you can do from the regulatory side, but you still can't force someone to build their projects. And if the projects, um, if you're not in compliance, um, the developer can force basically by right, so take most of the public hearing process away. So it's quite a change from where we've been in the past. The used to be the monitoring for compliance would happen just at the end of your housing element cycle. So um, it used to be every four years and then it went to every um, eight years. So that used to be where the monitoring would come in and now it's annual and they, they put you on what I like to call the shame list. So they put your status online so anybody can go check. So saw um, the shame list. <laughs> yeah. I, I was going to say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and there were some prizes, I think, for San Jose had some surprises with some of their procedures. Mm -hmm. There was some, some technical yeah. Um, issues. Yeah, most of the... I think most, if not all, of the Sonoma County jurisdictions have are you know sort of so far so good, um, but it's you know going to be a year-to-year -year type of evaluation. So we'll see. But yeah, fingers crossed. So thank you very much. Um, any reports by members of the council? I said we. I went to the conference, obviously, and. It was good. We, um, the three of us went. So it was good. And it was, there was a lot of things that we learned a little bit about housing. And um, they had a nice book giveaway this time. So that was kind of interesting to get a couple books about planning. And I think it's always, um, always good to get that energy and to kind of um, see what's out there and see what um, other folks are doing. So. Suzanne? I also thought that conference was really worthwhile, so thank you to the city for allowing us to go. So um, I went there as well, and one of the things, that, one of the data points that came up for me was that Peter Parkinson, who was a former director of Sonoma PRMD, and talked about the wildfire recovery, and he had been burnt out. But he mentioned a figure that um, of that he's seeing as the rebuilding costs is over four hundred dollars a square foot. 
so 400 to 700 dollars a square foot and I, I know another friend who got burnt out and he's got a very high price he did a fixed price for his he's in the bottom of Mark West Creek um, so it's kind of a bit of a shock at that but that's the sort of you know that probably impacts some of the housing sort of things that are going on as well yeah. that was kind of interesting because we just um, evaluated the insurance on my mom's house mm -hmm. and I put that in there saying one of the things was it's such a cost from our conference and one of the things is those houses were completely burned down so usually normally a house doesn't completely burn you know a section of it will burn or a kitchen will burn or something like that so the costs aren't so much to rebuild a portion of a house as in the house is completely burned down so this is a little explanation that I got because I brought up our conference um, thing that I think we need to raise <laughs> insurance. The data, yeah. So doing it was just interesting, interesting to see the different perspective from an um, insurance agent. Mm. And then the other person that spoke also was Kevin Fang, who is an assistant professor at SSU Department of Geography, and he just had some really interesting observations on traffic. So he's actually tra studying traffic and vehicle miles traveled and particularly looking at the, um, some of the, the, the lift type economy that's going on and how would that impact the streets. And, and he was basically saying a vehicle on the street is a vehicle on the street no matter where it's going. So the only way you're really going to, re what I took away from it, the only way you're really going to reduce the density of traffic on the streets is reduce the volume that people travel in. Or which is buses, or which is something else, or bicycles. Um, so that's just a, you know, that was a sort of an interesting commentary on on the study of where you could get some changes, or where there might be a hope for changes. And I know a lot of the startup companies always try and promote something. Well, having been on the inside of them, they always try and promote a story that everybody likes. But the, you know, the, 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 just that side of the economy won't really change the traffic patterns too much. In fact, I mean, some places have said it puts more people on the streets looking for, looking for business and stuff. So it was very good. I thought it was excellent to go along and have a look at it. So uh, any other issues or we'll bring the um, Planning Commission, adjourn the Planning Commission at 7.40. Thank you very much.